Hey, Dave Williams here, and this is the Electron X channel. In this video, I am going to do a number of calculations to figure out what's going on in this circuit right here. And specifically, I am going to determine the current in the circuit. Let me note here as I. I'm going to calculate the power factor. I'm going to calculate the average power dissipated by this circuit, as well as the average power delivered by the source. I'm going to calculate and sketch the voltages across the resistor. I'll call that VR. Voltage across the inductor. I'll call that VL. And the voltage across the capacitor. I'll call that VC. And then finally, I will confirm Kirchhoff's voltage law. And what I should confirm there is that the sum of the resistor voltage, inductor voltage, and capacitor voltage should add up to the source voltage, which is 100 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. Okay, to start, I am going to calculate the current. And the current, which I'm denoting here as, as I, and it's a phasor, so I'm indicating that with the arrow above the I. That is equal to the source voltage, let's call that VSRC, divided by the total impedance. Well, I know what the source voltage is. It's given to me over here. What I need to calculate now is the total impedance. Total impedance is the sum of the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the inductor plus the impedance of the capacitor. The impedance of the resistor, that one's pretty straightforward. That is simply 25 ohms with no imaginary component. So I can denote it that way, or I could even leave off the J0 part. The impedance of the inductor, I need to calculate from the inductance. But I need one more piece of information. And I need to know what the frequency of this AC voltage source is. And the frequency is 4,000 radians per second. So the impedance of the inductor is equal to the reactance of the inductor with a phase angle of 90 degrees. The reactance of the inductor is equal to omega L. And omega L will be 4,000 times the inductance, which is 10 millihenries, phase angle of 90 degrees, and that works out to 40 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Or I could rewrite this as J40 ohms, if I'm doing this in rectangular coordinates. The impedance of the capacitor is equal to the reactance of the capacitor with a phase angle of negative 90 degrees. The reactance of the capacitor is 1 over omega c, and 1 over omega c is going to be 1 over 4,000 radians per second times 10 microfarads, and that works out to 25 ohms with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees, or negative J 25 ohms. So now I just need to take the impedance of the resistor, the impedance of the inductor, and the impedance of the capacitor, and add those together. And I get 25 ohms plus J 40 ohms plus negative J 25 ohms, which works out to 25 plus J15 ohms. And then I can take that impedance, plug it into my equation right here, and I get I is equal to 100 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees, divided by 25 plus J15 ohms. Well, I can convert that into polar coordinates to make this division easier. The magnitude will be 25 squared plus 15 squared, and then take the square root of that, and that works out to 29.15 ohms with a phase angle of the inverse tan of 15 over 25. And that's equal to 30.96 degrees. Plug these numbers into my calculator. The magnitude will be 100 divided by 29.15, and that works out to 3.43 amps. And the phase angle will be zero minus 30.96 degrees gives me negative 30.96 degrees. Now I've calculated the current and I've written it out here on my circuit. The second thing I want to do is calculate the power factor. And the power factor is due exclusively to the phase 
difference between the voltage and the current, and that phase difference is minus 30.96 degrees. My power factor is the cosine of that phase difference, and that is equal to 0 0.86. The third thing I want to do is calculate the average power dissipated by the circuit. Well, only resistors will actually dissipate power. The power of inductors and capacitors is reactive power, so it's power that gets absorbed by the circuit element and then returned to the circuit by the circuit element. So only resistors dissipate power. Power dissipated by a resistor is equal to the current squared times the resistance. And I can use simply the magnitude the RMS magnitude, and I'm, I'm going to assume that all these values I'm dealing with are RMS values. So this 3.43 amps is the RMS current. 3.43 amps squared times the resistance of 25 ohms. Multiply those two things out, and I get power dissipation of 294.1 watts. The fourth thing I want to do in this circuit is calculate the average power delivered by the source. Power from the source is equal to the voltage delivered by the source, the RMS value, times the current times the cosine of the phase angle between voltage and current. So in other words, times the power factor. That works out to 100 times 3.43 times a power factor of 0.86, which gives me a power delivered by the source of 294.1 watts. That should be unsurprising because the power used by the circuit must be equal to the power delivered by the circuit. In other words, the power in and the power out must balance each other. Now the fifth thing to do is to calculate and sketch the voltages across the resistor, inductor, and capacitor. Now this is a fairly straightforward thing to do. I am going to calculate each one of those by taking the current and multiplying it by the impedance of the component. So the voltage across the resistor will be that current times the impedance of the resistor. So that's equal to 3.43 amps with a phase angle of negative 30.96 degrees times 25 ohms with a phase angle of 0 degrees. To calculate that, I take 3.43 times 25 to give me 85.75 volts with a phase angle of negative 30.96 plus zero. So phase angle is negative 30.96 degrees. Now it makes sense that the phase angle of the voltage across that resistor and the phase angle of the current through that resistor are equal to each other. Current and voltage should be in phase in a resistor. Now I have this answer in polar coordinates. To calculate rectangular coordinates, I take 85.75 times the cosine of the phase angle for the real part and 85.75 times the sine of the phase angle to get the imaginary part. And if I plug those numbers into my calculator, I get 73.53 minus J44.11 volts. The voltage across the inductor. Well, that's equal to the current, 3.43 with a phase angle of minus 30.96 degrees times the impedance of the inductor. And from my previous calculations, I know that is 40 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Multiply those two things out, the magnitude will be 3.43 times 40, which gives me a value of 137.2 volts. And the phase angle will be negative 30.96 plus 90 degrees. And that gives a phase angle of 59.04 degrees. Now I can also convert this into rectangular coordinates. So the real part will be 137.2 volts times the cosine of the phase angle and the imaginary part 137.2 volts times the sine of the phase angle. And that works out to 70.58 plus J 117.65 volts. And the final voltage that I need to calculate is the voltage across the capacitor. And that is the current through the capacitor times the impedance of the capacitor, which I've calculated earlier to be 25 ohms with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. 
the magnitude 3.43 times 25 is 85.75 volts and the phase angle minus 30.96 plus negative 90 which gives me a phase angle of minus 120.96. I can also convert this into rectangular coordinates and you'll see in a minute why I want these all to be in rectangular coordinates. So that is, has value of minus 44.11 minus J 73.53 volts. Okay I've written out the resistor capacitor and inductor voltages here because I want to sketch these voltages but I'm not going to sketch them as sine waves where we understand that they're sine waves. I'm going to sketch these as phasors. So in my real and imaginary plane the voltage of the resistor is going to be positive in the real direction but negative in the imaginary direction and it's going to look something like this. The voltage across the capacitor is going to be negative in the real direction and negative in the imaginary direction and it's going to look something like this and then the voltage across the inductor is positive in both the imaginary and the real direction and it's going to look something like this. Now it may not be so obvious when we're looking at these three phasors but if I add these phasors together they should add up to the source voltage and th if that is true then it's confirming Ohm's law. Well, it's going to be much easier if I use the numbers here instead of trying to add these phasers, which I'd really just sketched out. So the total voltage across these, let's call this BT, it's going to consist of the real parts added together. So I take 73.53 plus negative 44.11 and 70.58, add those together, and guess what? That adds up to 100. And then if I take minus 44.11 minus 73.53 plus 117.65 guess what that adds up to zero which means I have this total voltage which is equal to 100 plus J0 in rectangular coordinates or in polar coordinates 100 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees which if you recall is equal to the source voltage 100 volts phase angle zero degrees so right there I have confirmed Kirchhoff's voltage law for this particular circuit. So after I finished all those calculations, I decided to do a simulation of the circuit. And you can see the results of that simulation here. The red sinusoidal signal you see is the voltage from the source. The blue one's the voltage across the resistor. The green one is the voltage across the inductor. And the pink one is the voltage across the capacitor. Now counterintuitively, the voltage across the inductor has an amplitude higher than the voltage across the source. But what you need to keep in mind is that it's not the magnitude or the amplitude of any of the voltages across the components that matters. It's the sum of those voltages that add together to give you the voltage of the source if Kirchhoff's voltage law is being followed. And of course Kirchhoff's voltage law is being followed as I showed in the video when I did the calculations. But I just wanted to point out this one counterintuitive thing that you can sometimes come across where a component voltage is actually higher than the source voltage. So here we're back to the initial circuit. and We've gone through and we figured out the total impedance in this circuit, the current that's going through the circuit. We figured out the power factor, the power dissipated, and the power supplied by the voltage source calculated the voltage across the independent, each of the independent components, and finally confirmed Kirchhoff's voltage law. So you could use this process on any series circuit example that you come across. I think I've covered just about everything that you can calculate for these series circuits, except uh, a couple of other things related to power. Anyway, I hope you learned a little bit in this series circuit example. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.